Let's see. I mean, Ash, this is Three, this map. Let's two, see if he can one, take the first map off fight. the cooler. <laughs> yep, first map, pick. Toxicity, that's gonna be Ash's choice. Of course, he loves this. Kula struggles here. Oh, we don't like this map, but can Kula make it happen when it counts? That's some great LG damage. You can see the tactical prowess are standing on the stairs. What does it do? It makes it hard for you to be hit by rocks. Because you want to hit the floor to get splashed. You can't hit the floor if they're yep. on the stairs. It's so, it's so, so, so difficult. And uh, it's just, um, I think Kula really wants to play it slowly. And I think that will play into Ash's game because Ash really forces himself on the items and once again it's just every time someone or Kula picks up an item, Ash will try to be there and do, do some damage. This time he wasn't able to, but Ash definitely is in a, in a strong position because he has got the shaft, he's got the rail, he's definitely got some armor. The, the only thing that he lacks is positioning right now, but he surely will walk on that. Exactly, so there is the red up on the spot. Baited there, Kula's gonna jump out of the corner just in time to get the damage there. Clean oh. until that rail. Wow. Oh, there you go, that was so, so needed. So quick. I mean, he was in the disadvantage when he took yeah. the fight, and Kula was there with the shaft a bit earlier and dished out some damage. But Ash quickly adapted and this was like, you know what, when you wanna leave the room, I'm gonna hit you with a rail. And he yeah. did it twice. And once again, Kula always, when he, it's like he's always trying to get out of a room. Mm. And boom, Ash is there, waiting for it. Yeah, that was really, really perfect by, by Ash, you know. He was behind the stack, he managed to get back in there. Now Kula's all, all of a sudden in dire straits. There is the rail, however, and Ash is going to be engaging with the lightning gun. And here's Frigga Teleporter. Kula tries to get his way back over to the yellow. He's just cycling around because there's nothing really up. Mega and Red are spawning, nope. but he's not in a great position to take it. There's damage from above there. Uh, Kula has to go for the red nice. in now. He can go to the Mega. Why did Ash do that? Some crazy moves by Ash, but he does manage to get back to Mega, um, red in, Mega in time with a rocket jump. So that, that quick movement from Ash really shows his map is shining through as this kill on Kula is so inevitable at this point. Yeah, definitely. Kula is always, he's playing so slow and it's not, I mean, he's one of the players that don't move that much on the map, especially when they're out of control. And you, you can just see it. It's like he, he doesn't really move that much, whereas Ash is really just trying to sort of circle, he's trying to circle around Cooler, um, trying to find an in, and Cooler still is doing a great job with hardly having anything. And look, he's just like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go here, take up some yellow, take the 25 HP bubbles, and just wait, listen. Okay, I hear Ash over there, I take the teleport. I try to dish out some damage before the red armor has been picked up. And now Cooler uh, sees the opportunity, he's going for the red. Yeah, it's gonna be a very, very hard fight for a Cooler to take, and Ash lands on top with 100 health remaining and some armor, and Cooler once again off spawn. Oh, he's gonna beautiful be in dodging. a bad positioning. Great Ash, dodging, Cooler. Ash hoping for uh, Cooler to jump over to the rocket to see you know, if he can actually land that rocket. But no! What? Five health and Ash finds the kill and the Mega's now up for a cooler off the spawn. Takes a facial but the Mega is there as a reward and that was an amazing display there. And Kula is dodging man. You cannot forget, you know sometimes it's very easy to miss the fact that oh you know Ash just missed a shot. But often times you know the players like are such high level with their dodging, Kula's renowned for it, that they make they, they make it insanely hard to even hit. So, Kula definitely displaying some good dodging skills as he waits perched above this red armor. And there is Ash surely to be coming. And there it is, rockets from above. And Kula needs to avoid damage it. Oh, the rocket, the rail, he's out of there, but the cost was very high and very dear. And the Mega's up there for Ash. So Ash will take this one away. And Ash can get aggressive very soon. As soon as Kula goes to mid map, Ash can be all over him. Kula's being very slow, very careful, very deliberate, picks up some health, engages Ash. And then slow down once again as Kula controls the pace of that fight. But Ash doesn't want to let Kula control anything and picks wow. away Kula. And there's one more on the board. And this is what separates these two. It's like Ash, um, okay, he's going to wait for Kula to do a move. And he knows, okay, I'm really quick on setting up the shot. Uh, setting up the shot and that's what he does. It's like, oh, I see an opportunity and he goes for it. And two rails in a row. Kula is screaming, and if he drops down to the red, he's going to be dead for sure. Yeah. Ash still has got some time to pick up the mega health and moving over to the red. Kula already is there, and he's going to go down. Ash could have just really... I mean, that was yeah, unavoidable, really. I yeah. mean, Ash had really had the timing on. 
Ashi, I want to like, quickly highlight this aiming technique that Ashi used, which no one ever talks about. Um, he basically opened up an angle, and he, he knew, it was like this much of he knew exactly how the killer was going to cross in this, this angle. Yeah. And so basically, he knew that he couldn't keep moving and set up the shot because he can't do both things at once. So he moved just a tiny bit, then he aimed at the furthest point that he could, knowing yeah. how much time Killer had to travel, and then just shot. Like, regardless of what does Killer do, he shoots there, and he actually hit those shots. And that's like one of those shots that you don't really aim. It's like yep. these little intuition like, things, that, these moves that players make that never get talked about. So yeah, it's and one of the uh, Ash also has a, a higher sensitivity than Killer has. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, pr I'm, I'm pretty certain about that. And Ash just loves to play the really fast-paced game, and it's really, it's really enjoyable to, to see him you know, play. Because the way he, oh, yeah. he moves very aggressively around the map and, and taking you know the, these quick fights here and there, but it's not gonna be enough. Six to three. Cooler got a frag. Oh, he has to go for Mega. There yep. it is. Oh, Mash is there. Oh no, Ash is gonna take away the Mega from him. And Cooler actually had an opening there. I guess he didn't know from the spawn, but let's get the red instead. And 25 is up there, but Ash does take him down. That's really heartbreaking for Cooler because he was really coming back into it. Yeah, and now Ash is just chasing, trying to yeah, chase Cooler away, but it's sort of a, a brief stalemate between these two because both are low and uh, both are trying to find some armor and some health. But where's Cooler? Is Cooler gonna be here? No. There he is, finally he's going in at the right moment, taking the frag, 7 of 4. Oh no, he's actually shooting the grade and dropping down. Ash, he's the opportunity, takes the frag, takes the yellow and it's uh, gonna be able to move over to the rail and wait for Cooler to appear at the next Red Armor. Yeah, Red is coming up soon, and Ash is gonna be all over that. And Cooler's going to try to deal some damage, but Ash, look at the, he's just kind of pinning him down on the corner there, just pinning him down on the corner yep. with that LG, and Cooler's just removed of options, and Mega's so far away that Ash can really focus on one item at a time. Doesn't have to rush himself too much to be like, oh no, I've got to deal with this right quickly to get in position for that item, because they're nice and spread apart, and that's a really key, key point of really keeping and maintaining control, getting that cycle laid out all perfectly for you. And there's a Mega pickup once again, Cooler goes in for the kill, but I don't know if he can do it. I mean, he does fall, and Ash is looking really, really easy for him now. It feels like maybe Cooler's opportunities to really get back in this game have kind of been used up at this point. Uh, I mean, Cooler sort of. This was more or less his last chance, going very aggressive with that rocket. Um, but Ash had the shaft out, and just. I mean, Cooler couldn't really do anything. It's, it's so hard to to hit good rockets. If you don't hit the first rocket, you bound, you're not really bound to hit the second one. It's going to be really hard because when you, when you hit the first rocket, you so, most of the time you can predict whether where the player will be, um, you know, will, will be moving. But if you don't hit one, it's just going to be really difficult because you're not going to get an entering. And right now, 11 to 4, two minutes left. Kula is, is going to really have a, a daunting task to get this, uh, to get the tracks back. Yeah, it's going to be really, really daunting to be. I mean, Kula's in this position where he's got not enough time on a map where damage exchanges happen very, very quickly. It's not like Blood Run sometimes where a map that seems slower can actually be, be uh, easier to get frags back quicker because it's you can really get that stack of planets really, really fast. But this map, the guy you're, that you're chasing down can constantly be dealing damage and it's yep. really, really hard to keep stacking back up again. So it just slows you down really. But let's see, I mean, if uh, can do I mean, anything last minute. Ash already has not given up per se, but just knowing, okay, I'll play the clock, I'll play the clock. I do the plus back with the rockets. Kula will definitely take like 200 damage when he tries to approach me. That's, he can try that three times, but eventually he's gonna die. And this is actually was, uh, what, what Ash is doing right now. And he's, he's lowered um, Kula's health to a point where Kula has to be careful on, on the way he approaches fights. Yeah, most certainly, but it seems like uh, on map number one it's all gonna be over for Kula, but you know, this is to be somewhat expected. It's really a, a specialist, you know, rather, Ash is quite this toxicity specialist, whereas Kula, not so much known for that. In fact, if you're going to pick any map to defeat Cooler, it's either this or Cure, I'd say. Yep. So, the following maps are going to be much more lucrative for Cooler, much more appealing to the Cooler fans, perhaps. Yeah. Um... 
Mm. I would I would like to I would like to see T7. I, I didn't see them in the maps, but I think T7 is really that that one map where where both can really excel at their wits at the long on, at the long range game and at the fights. You know yeah. that, that sort yeah. of suits their style because I think toxicity is like a bit one sided in terms of preference. Yeah, it's, and it's, I think T7 is is a map which which both like. Which both like. Yes. It's end statement. Yeah, yeah. no, no, it's, it's, it's really, um, it is considered to be kind of the most balanced map, which is yeah. you know, something that's being, that's, that's what people say. And I, I, I can agree, I can agree with that. You know, it has a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has some fast play on it. It has some slow play. You can really mix them, you know, mix it up a lot. And there's a lot of really interesting decision making that can go on there. And it's always an insane one to watch. I never get, and I don't really get bored of Furious Heights. I've got to say, no, it's, it's a good map. I, I mean, I might be a bit biased because it's usually the map that I practice, but um, I've also started, although ZTN is not really my favorite map, I started to play it as well because it, it really helps you to excel at duel because of yeah. the, Three, the way you can play two, the items. One. And here we go, we're getting into the match on Blood Run map number two between Cooler and Ash. And now get taken away by Ash there. Cooler is trapped. Trapped all the way at this red arm. He does manage to escape, doesn't take crazy damage. Luckily, he's not playing slide, but he will never miss those shots again. Whoa, okay. Ouch. Look at that. Ash jumping on the latch, giving Cooler hardly any ability to hit. I mean, the arrow he would have had to hit would have been so, so difficult. Um, yeah, Ash just playing great at the beginning, and Cooler, I mean, he's very limited because he doesn't really have the, the weaponry to work with at the minute. And already he's getting punished for that very fact. Yeah, that's that is for certain. And Kula is gonna basically just be he's gonna he's, he'll be content to be like, okay, I'm out of control. I realize this. There's no you know escaping that that fact. That's really the fact of the matter. So I'm just gonna chill. That's my position. I'll chill. Get some yellows. Try to build my, my way up. Get some item times, and play it slow. And that's what he's gonna try to do. Sometimes you know it, it can an opportunity can present itself. Something can fall in your lap, and sure you take it. But otherwise, he's going to be relying upon a very standard passive game here, based on just avoiding Ash. And he's probably going to have, like, he knows Ash relatively well, so he might have some some kind of player reads that seem a bit crazy that he can make, but just mm. because he knows Ash pretty well. And here you go, he's over at Mega. He thinks that, like, the Mega could be around this time, but every jeweler has that. I think I think Kula was really fortunate to uh, to have gotten that yellow freely. Because I just took the teleport, and he probably wasn't really aware of that mega uh, of that yellow timing. Yeah. And then, as he as he entered the teleporter, he may have realized it and went back again to do some damage. But you... overall, um, I think Kula is still in a great position, having that mega health to back himself up. Oh. Losing, losing the fight. Run out of LG ammo. You run out of fight. LG, and the problem is when you run out of LG, and you get to the point where it like clicks. And you don't have ammo anymore, and when you switch the weapon, then you you, you don't have. Um, it like, takes longer. It takes yeah. longer to switch the weapon at that point, and I'm, that's exactly what happened. If I'm Kula had switched damage. earlier, he would have uh, been able to dish out a bit more damage. Yeah, and actually, you know, something, Kula did something interesting in the opening moments. We knew that he didn't have a necessary strict mega time. Oh, beautiful! That's really going to put Kula back in the game now. And as he picks up a free mega afterwards, he'll be able to get onto this damage onto the red there as Ash swoops it away. Actually, Ash was really quick there. Ash does have great movement. Oh, nasty grenades there. And this could be dangerous for Kula. Those kids flying overhead very precariously. But Kula actually, at the start of the game, kind of extrapolated the item times. And this is something that, you know, of course, they don't have the timers on the side that the spectators do. They're doing all of that by themselves. So something that they play them to do is they kind of memorize like when things spawn so you know megas like, if you give it five seconds it's like you know 115 140 and yep, so on yep. 225 or 230 45 and so on and so forth and every jeweler has that up to like six minutes so that really yep, helps yep. You. And it's also at, at the beginning i mean at the beginning sort of uh, you can just remember the times but um i think i just want to comment on the on the way cooler is, is playing right now and it's, well, okay he's, he's just been surprised by, by by ash there but wow Kula is finally hitting a bit better than Ash is expecting him to do, and uh, Kula has been using a bit more shaft, um, you know, making making sure that he actually dishes out damage in situations where he well, very well at, could have used the rail. So um, yeah, it really looks like Kula is, is playing it, tries to play his 
safe. He obviously is always trying to do that, but um, he's usually a beast out of control with the rail. I do, I do love that about Evil's style, because Evil's like one of those players where, okay, he's, he's essentially the second best in the world, like, that, that can be pretty much playing than the speed at this point, but another fight breaking out there. It's actually trade, and Megas up, uh, Red is up on the spot, rather. I guess not for another Did Kula seconds, but... spawn at the rocket, and can maybe... Yeah, he spawned up there, can take him. Is he going to do the flat rocket jump yeah. away, or is he just going to try to... I mean, he might as well, because he takes the same amount of damage from Ash's engagement. Yeah. Oh, wow, he goes aggressive, and he almost killed Ash in time, but... Interesting stuff there, 2 zero still... That's, that's something, what you, what you just pointed out, is quite interesting. If you take the decision to rocket jump out, or if you take the decision to actually jump out uh, off that red armor platform, you know, the, the question is... In what case, what case should you take? And that's always really depends on the guy that's shooting from below, yeah. what angle he has. But anyway, Ash um, really is just trying to stay alive here, but finally uh, Kula is getting the frag. And it's another thing, like the initial point earlier, he was really, really good with the LG, and he, ops he, he doesn't need a railgun. Like, there's a lot of players that rely on railgun, but the, thing about the, difference, the fundamental difference between Ash and LG is that railgun is burst damage. If you miss that, you miss an opportunity for damage. If you, yep. With LG, it reloads so fast, you always are guaranteed damage. Ooh, guaranteed damage. So close for Kula, he's got 5 HP. The 25 HP levels are not there, there's one, but Kula is still available, and he shouldn't really move too much. Nah, um, Ash is expecting him to lurk, uh, to, for him to lurk around over there. Kula has to drop down, he has to get away here. And now he's gonna, gonna wait for Ash to do the move. Yeah. Kula unfortunately to not hit that air rocket. And now the question is, will Kula be able to pick up the mega health timing? Ah, oh, that, that is a good clue. Kula just saw Ash picking up the shaft, so... Essentially, you could assume, okay, you know what, he just took the Mega Health and then went straight to the Shaft. So this is the clue that he can use to his advantage when the next Mega Health can, uh, uh, appears. Kula has most likely uh, the timing of the Red Armor because Ash just picked it up earlier. So the question is, how, the, how can Kula find a way over to the Mega Health and dish out some damage when, uh, when Ash takes it? That is the question. But Kula's, you know, he's, he's sitting on a nice little lead. Uh, and great, great play by Ash to place some nades there because that, that, that doesn't allow you know, Kula to push in and, and try to rail him. So once again, Ash not receiving damage. Indeed. And Kula, he, it looks like he's just trying to kill the clock at the, at the minute. He's trying to wait here and literally rockets coming from Kula. Very, very good engagement. He by far got the better of that. They came off relatively even on stacks afterwards, but Kula was being out stacked, so you can tell mm -hmm. that's, that's the, the telltale sign that he actually managed to take the better fight over his opponent. And right here, you have some great damage coming in from Kula. Oh, the quick rail switch. That was really, really brutal. Put Ash to one health. I have no idea if Kula even and understands. Ash probably dropped down and he wasn't able to take the red armor, and Kula's strafing to the side. So he wouldn't be able, you know, so he wouldn't land on the red, red platform taking unnecessary damage. Now he's below, waiting for Ash to do the move. And it's really interesting because Ash might usually sw uh, stay around, but the fact that he's available is like, I really don't even want to mess with this situation. Oh no, Ash is gonna go down. Good no, he's not. There. He got out of it. Pretty unbelievable he managed to escape. He's, he's got a time on his life, but there it is. He was gonna get that frag, it's just a matter of when. Yep. And there it was, finally, to, to be taken by the Russian. So that means that we're most likely, unless something crazy happens, going on to a third map. Yep. But we'll, we'll see. Maybe that will clear once again. And he's coming on to his opponent. And that's going to be frag number five. Ash has to come back five frags in two minutes against Kula on Blood Run. Just, just saying. Yeah, and Kula just spotted him. That radar is going to be very, very important. Kula just going to chill out here for the next yellow, spamming some nades. Sort of revealing his positioning, but uh, he doesn't have to you know, worry too much because he's got a 5 track buffer and now he's sort of stuck over there. Nice creative rocket jump out of the situation. Kula with 6 HP trying to get away, boosting himself up with a 25 HP bubble and finally or just about to take that uh, teleporter for Ash not to take the rail angle, but Ash doesn't care. He's moving in with the shaft, getting the frag. 5 to 1, 1 and a half minutes, and Kula is still doing the slow approach. Yeah, he is, and here we go. Kula 
He's got to hold on to this lead. He's got a lot of time to build. Well, like I say a lot of time. 70 seconds. It's actually not very much time for someone of Kuhn's caliber. Let's see how he does it. Does it? Let's see how he does it. No crazy shenanigans for Ash. And in fact, Kuda's going to turn around and say, Enough is enough. And this is a really strong position. When, when, when you're in this spot, sometimes you can be comfortable to mm. die. To basically go, I'm just going to take this really good fight. Because afterwards, what I'm off the spawn, I'm stronger than you. So, Kuda even gets the frag. That's GG right there. And Ash is going to say, Well played. Yep. And that's going to be map number two. Cleaned and dusted off by Kuda. And he's going to. Uh, make his way onto the third map now. Third so, map. It's, it's interesting, um, the way Kula moves from out the map is he's not moving that much as other players, like Ash always constantly moving, you know, doing cues here and there, and Kula's is always, he's hardly moving at all, and he's still like winning the fights. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just really beautiful to see the, the way he moves around the map. And, and, and takes the items and takes takes the fights very collectively. So you're gonna get what you want. Yeah. What? <laughs> Furious eyes. Oh you yeah. Wanted, man. Oh finally, I got it. I got it. I'm that's here. What, I'm here requested. with your DDK. It's what you wanted. Yeah. T7. That's a wanted. great great map to uh, finish the fi uh, finish the semis. Um, so here we are. Ash and Kula is gonna be the deciding map, and the winner will play against Cipher in the grand final. Will it be Ash? Will it be Kula? Last week we had Ash taking down Kula to then make it to the finals and win against Agent. This time, can Kula make it through to his rival Cypher? That's the question. Here we are now. We're going to decide this on Furious Heights. What, is there a better map to do that? I don't think so. Oh, what a horrible storm. But Ash is actually not hitting as well as he wants to. Or as he you know, was going to. But uh, yeah. It's, it's still very, it's still very even because Akula has got the rail, he's got the yellow, and um, yeah, he's he's probably gonna. We always talk about that weaponry advantage that you have on T7. Now it's all about Ash, you know, catching Kula off guard, which is exactly what he does. Kula not c connecting with the rail, um, but Ash finally picking up that rail, while Kula on the other side is picking up the shaft. So now we are at square one. The only thing that separates these two is probably that um, Kula doesn't have as much armor, but finally Kula finds a way in and he's taking the frag, which was really odd because Ash should have not fallen down or dropped down there. It was really unfortunate for him and now Kula's on a roll. Yeah, he's taking away the red armor. Very uncontested red. Nothing from Ash at all. Not even a flicker of damage coming in from him. That replenishes all the ammunition, just making sure that he's totally ready for everything. Red and Mega are synced up, so that is always worthy to point out as it becomes an opportunity for the player who is out of control to make his way back into the map somehow. So let's see if that's actually going to happen right now. And it, you know, of course, Ash does manage to pick up that weapon and rather that red armor and that's going to give him a chance but oh, here comes the setting up a trap is ash gonna fall for it the ash. top spot there oh is. ash knowing that Kula was turning around there Kula dropping down hitting some nice vertical shaft and ash still trying to defend his life around that pillar and he's doing a great job doing so i mean 17 xp that fadeaway rail definitely put him on wow. par with Kula, but Nice. Kula taking the angle just before he wanted to pick up that 50 HP bubble, and now Kula is about to go for the 200 200. Yeah, and Ash hoping for a direct rocket. Oh, he is getting at least some damage out of there. He I is, mean, you know, it's, it, Kula, Kula could have been essentially 200 200. I mean, could have been worse. But the problem is that Ash spawned over at the shaft side while Kula was collecting the red. And the, and the yellow, so um, if Ash had actually spawned on the red, which could have which could have happened, but didn't, it would have been definitely a better uh, situation. But right now, having the split of the items, that's the only advantage Ash, ha uh, Ash has right now. And that is not much of an advantage to boast about. And you know, Ash read Kula's trap very well, but Kula was able to turn it into a a boon instead anyway, and Kula gonna make his way back around to that yellow mega position, does spot Ash finally, and Ash is gonna make some damage come in from above, but 
That one rail is very nice, but he doesn't want to expose himself too much more. I mean, he's not. If he takes one rail, it's kind of much worse for him than it is for Kulo. And there you go. Aggression onto this mega position. He knows he's got a bit of a stack advantage. Kulo's a bit shocked by how further his opponent Ash is. Further with which he attacks relentlessly. Kulo oh, defends, though, with I a like great this. rail. I like this. This is exactly what I was expecting by Ash. He's been doing this repeatedly. It's like, okay, the Kula is low, and it's like, okay, I can't go, I can't go to the item, because Ash could actually could go back into the room and try to rail me, and that's exactly what Kula thought. He was like, I know Ash is gonna come back, so I'm gonna look for a second angle before going going to the Mega Health, and this is, you know, something that Cooler didn't do um, last time he played in seven. If you were watching, you would see. Um, that um, Ash always, or a, a couple of times, was standing below through that lower corridor right here, setting up some shots when Cooler was trying to pick up the item. So six to nil, third map, and Cooler definitely has adjusted, or in my opinion, has sort of adjusted his game against Ash. Yeah, it does seem to be yielding quite a result. Halfway in the match, it's six to zero. Cooler could very well make it seven to zero as Ash. Tries to fight, tries to battle over this red. He does manage to win it. The thing is, is that if you watch Kula's positioning there, he didn't really take much damage because he he understood exactly how Ash was pushing up, and he never moved into where damage could come from. So Kula's very. This, this is this is called tactical prowess. And yep. wow, what a beautiful little switch there. He's in a very very fatal position. The mega was up on the spot and just so calm. Yep, and hits the rail. I mean Ash had a great idea of that unconventional positioning, like, um, you know, waiting there with a rocket at the, at the wall, with his back on the wall. But the problem is that Ash needed to hit the first rocket when Kula entered the room, which he didn't once again. So that allowed Kula to move, yeah, you know, freely around the pillars and just find a, find a way out of the room whilst, you know, uh, dishing out damage to Ash. Because Ash plays very, very rocket dependent. Or at least rocket, very rocket heavy, in my opinion. So this is something that um, Kula exploited, exploits very well so far. Yeah, I know for certain. And Ash is at the moment without much to do other than just bide his time a little bit. Kula's pretty weak, you know. He's, he's not got much armor. But so far he's been playing very cyber esque in that he's very, very good at judging in a tactical sense. Like when to get in, when to get out of fights. Yep. That's really one thing that Cypher is amazingly good at. Let's see, yeah, uh, Agent actually dropping down, knowing that Kula would actually go for that yellow and. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. What? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> He's was waiting bizarre. there. So, four, four minutes, it's still possible for Ash to get back. The only thing that he needs is more armor and more, uh, more ammo. Problem is, Kula took the Mega Health, he's got the shaft. He's probably got high positioning, or or moving. Yeah, now he just dropped down. He just saw he just saw Ash. So Ash has got the rail. Kula hasn't got one. Let's see if, if Ash can find a way in. Yeah, he's got three and a half minutes left to make six frags. It's 200 armor on him. There's another red to top up. He's got plenty of time to get over to Mega. This is really like an ideal situation for Ash. Really, really ideal. He's got 200, 200. Everything's cycled up how he wants it. Red coming up in 13 seconds. He's got to make a dive. He's got to make a read. But where is he going to be? Okay, there it is. He's going to just wait around this area. But he's, he's scooping up items. But he's coming to the point where you need to prioritize leaving stuff up and just going for the kill. Like committing and getting the trap, getting the ambush, getting the insane read where the other guy just yep. was like, what's going on? And you get the kill. So Ash now cycling around, cycling around. Look, where is Kula? He's, he's, an, he's just a ghost. He's a ghost. Yep. He's a ninja on the map. He's hiding in the shadows and Ash cannot find him. This is about a good minute being killed by Kula already. This is the, yeah, the Kula we know that doesn't move much. And, oh, look at this. He wasn't taking the items because he didn't want to give away the positioning. Yet, Ash knew it. Ash knew that he was waiting there. Finally got the flat. Two and a half minutes. Oh, this is going to be very bad. Ash is actually finding him there, exposed on that ledge. And this is, where the, this is where the item cycle is really, really important. Because that situation, imagine if the Mega and the Red were spawning at similar times. That, that situation completely stops Ash's momentum dead. Yep. Because there's a great split, 
Ash is able to continue the momentum, and this really allows him to make a comeback. And there you go, he's going to push forward oh, through the choke point, catch Kula in the back of the lightning gun. Kula waiting, such great move by uh, Kula actually waiting, because that will definitely allow him to, to hit another rocket. Great switch, two minutes remaining. And this oh, is now the problem. Oh, he had to spawn, this is bad for Kula. He eats a rocket right in the face. Oh, and there's the frag, two frags oh, to go. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, everything was in the Kula's palms. He had the game wrapped around his little finger. It was all under control. And out of nowhere, Ash makes the play. The items line up in such a way that he's going to be able to make this perhaps a victory. And he's going to prevail, yeah. maybe. But Ash, right Kula, now. Kula needs to take the red armor. He has to get it swiftly and get out of the room without taking too much damage. And Ash, is, his, his tempo is increasing. He's getting more and more desperate. He's taking Whoa. more and more rash decisions. Kula does so well with the rockets. And Ash is suddenly put to a hard choice and Kula's gonna Such make that choice easy for him. He's just gonna say lie down Ash and that's exactly what he does. Such a great move. I mean, you would have expected him. Okay, I'm, I'm a bit lower than Ash is. But what I actually did, he was waiting for Ash to enter the room. Knowing that, he, was, he, was a, uh, he had the ability to set up some shots and that's exactly what Kula did. And he pulled himself um, into the lead again. Yeah, it's the unreal. But Kula right now, actually, some danger, but with 40 seconds left, and three frags, and the, you know, it's not, he's not going to be fearing the Reaper just yet. It's going to be all right, and Kula most likely has managed to win this one. Yep, 30 seconds left, two frags. I mean, it's something nuts could happen, but are we going to? Yeah, we're going to see that from Ash. Ash has amazing execution. Let's see if, if Kula is waiting. Is Kula waiting at the nade? Yeah, he is. So um, two frags, 10 seconds, not going to be possible, and yeah. There's a full rocket. <laughs> Kula loves that positioning. He did that last map as well. It's just... He's so good at that. He's so, so good at you know, using the hiding spot. But at the same time, when he gets the ability, he will do so much damage. And there you go. Kula actually managing to make that victory on Furious Heights. It's a really cool play from Kula. Great stuff. And I think a lot of fans are going to be happy. And it's really yep. nice to actually see him kind of bounce back after last week where he was unable to defeat Ash. And this time, and, it, and it's really cool as well because it means we get, I mean, it'd be great to see Ash Cypher, but we've seen, we've seen that many times before. But it's so not, always so nice to see Cooler Cypher because there's so much more history. Yep. There's a rivalry, in fact. So it, hopefully it's going to be really good. And there might even be a little bit of smack talk. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And plus, I mean, Cooler and Cypher haven't been playing for a while. As, as, as far as I, I remember, I mean, when have they been in the, in, the, in the finals? You can't tell with Cypher though, his aim is today yeah. just on fire. Yeah, for sure. But so. it's still, I mean, it's, it always seems to be the same game. Uh, although you think, okay, Cypher has like sick aim, Kula just knows Cypher inside out and vice versa. But at the, at the same time, it, it still doesn't show that much in the scoreline. I mean, Cypher may do 1, 1k more damage, but Kula could be still in the lead because Cypher isn't, you know, mm. the, the guy that likes to go for the items per se. So, so yeah. That's going to be it. I mean, we're going to have the best of five grand final between Kula and Cypher. It's going to be coming up right after this break. So stay tuned, tweet about it, tell your friends, let's pump up the viewership and let's get them all ready for some epic Quake action. See you soon.